Wildcats. Almost had a shot clock violation. A catch by number 23 brings in uh, brings in somebody. I, I didn't quite see who went in. Whoops. He's making through. Michigan State answers back. Deflected by number 36. Now the Spartans are on the offensive. I tell you, it is a treat to see the Michigan teams play because Michigan is easily the most competitive region of the NCDA. Just firing away is Michigan State. UK now has three more balls in their possession. 36 with a beautiful twirl to avoid that ball. <laughs> He's got the fisherman's hat today. Here we see number 97. Both teams believe they have just called for a shot clock violation on the Spartans. This is huge for the Wildcats. They can really turn this around into their favor. They're trying to make some big things happen in the second half. Here we have the Wildcats. Wildcats are resetting. The whistle blows and now the Wildcats are ready to fire. Sideline refs are. Yeah. I was, I was down here because I had to charge my phone. That's why, yeah, because you were supposed to do it. Oh. I sent a message to the group saying I was down here. So like, oh! A punishing headshot to number 32. I mean, I'm only at 32%. If I take it up there, it's going to die like during the point. Oh, yeah, yeah don't, don't. Fuck that. It's not worth it. Yeah. Yeah, UK. A group throw from UK. Oh. Orange. And a catch from UK's captain, Zach Brown. Tries to answer back with another kill. Wow! Number 24 from the Spartans catches the ball. He caught the ball with his feet. That is... Number 97. I'm going to keep an eye on this guy. He is a strong thrower. Number 22. Number 22 and number 97 are two of the strongest throwers of this UK roster. But Michigan State is forced to be on the defensive with a lack of a ball advantage. 44 throws. 18. Number 18, blocked on the head. That's really disappointing. It's like he had the balls trying to block, and then the ball just kind of nipped him on the head. UK barely makes a throw. They make it a 13, just avoiding the shot clock violation. Number 97. Michigan State is really trying to slow this game down. Trying to keep it in their favor. Because we'll with a block. We're gonna follow up with a kill. Unfortunately, he was not able to. <laughs> so, 
pump fake there by number one, and a throw by number 20. A throw does not connect with a Spartan from the Wildcats. We have number one, number 16. Number 16 with the throw. I believe that is what that is the Wilshire number 16. 14. UK with the throw at 14. 96 with the catch. Cross court throw. Taking number 20 off guard. Number, number 22 is just agitated with himself. He's taking a shot at the punching bag as he walks down. 97. Fires a cannon. And a block for number 20. Now UK looking to answer back to the Spartan onslaught. 44 with the throw. Spartans pushing up. Ninety-seven fires and is blocked by number twenty. Oh, that's heartbreaking catch. Not able to be caught by number ninety-seven. Then he gets dinged in the back of the head. It's really messed up. Man, whether whether it was accidental or not, I'm not sure. But it was highly uncalled for. Tempers are flaring with the Wildcats and the Spartans. game right now to check on the condition of number 97 with the Wildcats. JD, JD, I can find out real quick. I need to get a train down here. It appears there's something wrong with his leg. I'm going to go ahead and assess the situation here. The Michigan State Spartans have, I believe, one, two, three, four. I believe they have eight players in the game right now. It's either eight or nine. And then I'll get to the UK side here in a moment. UK, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So appears to be about eight or nine players on the UK side. Shot clocks will be reset to zero. For those of you watching, this is the Michigan State University taking on the University of Kentucky Wildcats in the final round of action for Nationals Day One. So we see we have a trainer out here for number 97. That is Western alumni Alex Heichelbeck. See, it is 97's, it appears his right leg, his right leg was injured, apparently. It's a very unfortunate situation for the Wildcats. Apparently one of the Wildcats has just been declared as a wall. He is now a brick house. I said that wrong. That's supposed to be a song. Let's see, we're gonna we're gonna get back to the action as soon as possible. Now we have the teams reset. We have about 20 minutes left in the second half. At the pause, shot clocks are reset to zero, and the action is back underway with the Wildcats on the offensive. Wildcats slowly 
pushing their way. Forty four was caught there on the throw. Number sixteen is Wilshire. He's gonna throw away for the catch, does not. Hey, that should keep going. Like has to be a catchable ball. Yeah. And over the line. Play and play, and now it balls over. There's a shot clock violation for the Spartans. The Wildcats need to use this shot clock violation to their advantage. They have 10 balls, and I believe 10 targets. 96 goes down, I believe. Or no, that was a, I'm not sure if that was a team catch, because if it bounced off him and number 20 caught it, doesn't look like anybody has gone in for the start. So. It's very possible the ball could have been blocked. Or no, it couldn't have been blocked. It was a ball's over. Yeah, I'm rambling. Up. The throw bounces off the ground, but it is enough to cancel the shot clock. Or to reset it, rather, not cancel it. If it was canceled, we'd probably be here all night. Number three pushing up on the left side. 99 fires! 11, 12, 13, well, guys are highly frustrated. The University of Kentucky began the day. They began the day against the Grand Valley State Lakers. Or no, excuse me. They began their day against the Virginia Commonwealth, and then they played against Grand Valley. The throw there does not count. Number eight, forced to make it. Number three with the kill for the Wildcats. Let's see, number, number 97 has an ice pack for the leg now. Going with a pump fake, and then he falls over the real throw. And now the Wildcats with the counter attack. Will they make something happen here? I believe he went for the catch, but just barely avoided the ball. Spartans need to make a throw. And he gets the throw off at 14. Barely avoiding the shot clock. 73 with the throw. He seems they're drawing out the shot clock as long as they can. There was a cross court throw down there. I had to duck for that just in case. Bring my knee on the table. That sucks. 37 trying to get sneaky. Three fires. It goes into the back of the net, so that means the ball is dead. UK pushing up again. And the first throw that went over the wall. There's a, a third shot clock violation on the Michigan State Spartans. Once again, UK has another opportunity to make some big things happen. There was 16 minutes left in the second half. The Wildcats need to push the tempo if they want to score. Number 28 with a solo throw, only leaving the Spartans with one ball. Here we have number 16 pushing up by himself. 37 with a high throw. It does not count. 37 fires again. And 37 is caught out. 
But he's all smiles. Let's get this in. And now I believe it is it's a shot clock violation on the Wildcats. Not sure if that was a popular call. But nevertheless, this is, I believe, now we have the Spartans with the ball advantage now. The Spartans whittled down to, or no, the Spartans are still at strong with most of their roster intact. Wildcats. Cross court throw. Nearly takes it. Wildcats could really favor with some catches here. It's all good. Be, yeah. People got it bad. I'll be nice after you right now. Yeah. Or he's cheating. <laughs> and I'll, 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 I'll. He is on your hit list. Wildcats are not able to make any catches from those throws. Wildcats are on the 10 second shot clock. Really putting them in a tough position against the Spartans. I believe number six goes down there. Yeah, number six, he is left the court. We can blame him. We're not able, still not able to make catches from those throws. The Wildcats are surviving for the most part. Michigan State with the throws. Try to catch number three off guard, but he react his reaction time able to save him there. Cross court throw and number 28. I believe he was out on a catch. And now the Wildcats with their hopes on number 73. And with that, the Spartans are now up three to zero over the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Michigan State, if they manage to keep the lead here, they will finish 3-0 for the day. Michigan State started off the day with an impressive victory over Towson University, a clutch overtime victory over Kent State, where it's literally down to a one-on-one -on -one situation. A catch from the Michigan State player, saving the day. And now the Spartans, with 13 minutes left in the second half, will be looking to end the day on a 3-0 record. That will be huge momentum for the Spartans. We got three points, right? Yeah, it should be three. We're about to add it. All right. I just have no idea how to. That's fine. You see the Michigan State Spartans, 3-0. The Wildcats need some fast. It will take a miracle for the Wildcats to bounce back. The whistle goes, and a kill on number three from the opening rush, and number 57, Zach Brown, three kills and a catch! Zach Brown is a monster! Oh my goodness! He is just on it today! Three kills with the opening rush and a catch, and oh. And the fire has been dissipated. But UK, they are still coming out strong. They are coming out fast. 
Unbelievable. The plays from Zach Brown representing the University of, University of Kentucky well. The Spartans are already down. And number seven with a fantastic kill right there. Now 87 retrieving the ball just past the neutral zone line. And the, the Wildcats have a very early, very distinct advantage. This miracle may be coming to life if they can close this point out. Zach Brown was a man on a mission. Cross court throw. Thankfully deflect by number 19. Oh, but he is. Number 19 has gone down. Number 32 with a throw. Recess the shot clock. Was able to avoid the throw there. Eleven minute, eleven and a half minutes left in this half. The Wildcats need to act fast. All right. Thought about the catch. Went for the second one and is taken down. The Spartans are now down to seven players. Throw there. What? Hey, I know this table isn't very nice and all, but I mean, it's still sturdy. We can use it for something. I believe that the attempted cross court throw from the Michigan State player did not go over the line, that does not count, but that throw does. So Michigan State shot clock has been reset. The Wildcats are now. 13. A throw there from number 73, two throws from Michigan State. Let's see, let's get the numbers here. I believe we have, and a catch there, number 32. And a ball's over, another shot clock violation on the Spartans. Which is absolutely unbelievable. Reset. The Wildcats are going to make some big kills here. And a wild blue ball has made it onto the court that does not belong in this game. The throw for number 96 goes rather high. Will not result in a kill. 87 with the throw. Wildcats connect with a kill on number 16. That was a throw by number six. It was very lovely. Here we have number 37. Pushed up on the left side. Controversy from the Spartans. Apparently, a player has been standing out of bounds for most of the point. The catch there for number 66 of the Spartans. 87 for the Wildcats has gone down. Number 66. This man is massive. Number 73 is in for the Wildcats. Number 70, once again, number 73 and number three, the duo trying to make the dream work. If they can get this comeback, that would be absolutely miraculous from the Wildcats with eight minutes and 40 seconds left in this half. The Spartans. Number three was just a nonchalant throw there. He's really just kind of letting it go. 73, good throw. 
Nice block there. Five, six, seven, eight. A 10 second shot clock is coming into effect though that will cause number 73 to make a lot of throws. 11, 12, now Michigan State 13, needs to make a throw. Seven, throw towards number 66. Failed attempt from a catch of number 73. So now number three is the Wildcats' last surviving hope. A catch here would be huge. A throw caught by number 25. And with that, the Spartans have now increased their lead four to zero. The Wildcats just struggling today, trying to trying to get some points against the Spartans. It's an unfortunate situation for the Wildcats. With, with the loss of number 97, appearing to aggravate his right leg. They lose one of their key throwers and offense is affected by that. <laughs> and here we go off the opening rush. Zach Brown with yet another kill off the opening rush. He is a man on a mission. Zach Brown with a double kill from the opening rush. Went for the high catch there. It was probably number 99 has fed the ball to Zach. Zach is a man on a mission here. He is just. Fast and furious in the midcourt right next to me. Good lord. Calm down. Zach Brown, a man on a mission. He is just controlling the midcourt. Hey, is this ball in? Yo. Number 13, Zach Brown, the captain of the University of Kentucky Wildcats of their dodgeball program. 22 with a throw. I believe it, just, it appeared to slip out of his hands as it kind of just skidded across the ground. The Spartans now, they're just taking this slow and steady. They do not want to make any mistakes. UK with the throw, though. Shot clock has been reset. Zach Brown is commanding the neutral zone. A kill on number 31. And I believe Zach Brown has just gone down. However, a catch will quickly bring him back in. Oh, ball hits him as he's going out. That's just humiliating. Now throw from UK resets the shot clock. Number three fires away. And that is a catch. Zach Brown. 14, 15. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Zach Brown just. Mm. Two impressive blocks, but unfortunately, the kill that he had. Is not. Zach Brown has some impressive blocks, but was not able to get the throw off on time. Just, I am not in a position to take a stance on this. I am just the broadcaster. But nevertheless, whether it was the right call or not, now we have some dispute here. Zach Brown is disputing the call with the referee. Is 
Oh man, we lost some viewers. Dang. I'm disappointed. Zach Brown highly agitated about the, the uh, shot clock violation. Nevertheless, the story remains that the Michigan State Spartans now have 10 balls in their possession. Five minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock of the second half. From my personal view, I do believe that Michigan State will take this game with a victory. The question now remains, can they score a fifth point against the Wildcats? 37 with the attempted catch. Zach Brown heads out to grab the ball. Oh, the catch is good. The catch is good. Catch is good. You know if you threw that ball. The catch from Zach Brown. The first throw, the first ball that bounced off him, the catch was good, but the second throw still resulting in him being out. 12, 13, hey, very good. Nice throw there. 36 goes down. Just barely getting nicked. Hello. A group throw from 7 and 44 does not result in a kill, but the Spartans are now on their heels as the Spartans have six while the Wildcats stand strong with 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Throw is good for the Wildcats. And I believe the Spartans are now down to five players. The Wildcats have just come out blazing in this point. Despite the shot clock violation, Michigan State with five players is now on a 10 count. This would be this would be huge for the Wildcats to score to prevent the shutout from the Spartans. And a throw there from 32 takes out. A throw there. Shot clock violation on the Spartans. The Wildcats now have all 10 balls. Now the Spartans are definitely on their heels against the Wildcats here. The Spartans Although they have nothing to lose, considering they are in the lead with four points to zero. They do have to worry about their shutout. They do have concern about their shutout victory being foiled here. And now the Wildcats rush up. Number 20. Number 20 just got lit up by the Wildcats. There was no denying that that man was gone. Yet another shot clock violation for the Spartans. The Wildcats will again, will again gain all 10 balls. And with two minutes and 50 seconds left in the second half, the Spartans will indeed cinch victory over the Wildcats. So 
tell you what. With three men left standing for the Spartans, can the Wildcats close this out and prevent the shutout? Number 18, barely able to avoid the group throw there. 44 with the throw is deflected by number 96. Or excuse me, number 87, not 97. 44 standing tall and proud in the neutral zone. That group throw. Number 16 just kind of standing still. Was able to avoid the group throw there. And the catcher for number 18 brings in number 11. We are now less than two minutes away. A throw there for number 19, skitters across. 44 with the throw, seven follows suit. The Wildcats need to be the on the offensive here. They want to avoid the shutout. Seven with the throw, takes out number 11, but seven goes out with him. Seven with a beautiful trade there. Michigan State needs to make a throw. The throw will reset the shot clock. The Spartans are just playing on the defensive now. They want to maintain the shutout victory. Number 22 caught on the feet. The Spartans are getting some last second kills. Now with less than one minute remaining, the Wildcats are, and number 19, taken out by a shot to the chest. He was hoping that he could catch it off the bounce, but was not able to do so. I don't know. 35 seconds left. Wildcats need to act now. Twenty seconds left. The Wildcats need to get these. They need to get the three Spartans out. The suicide attempt does not go over for number 32. 99 with the throw does not connect. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and that is game, ladies and gentlemen. See you. Meeting a go. If I remember my shit. And the final results of this game, the Michigan State Spartans shutting out the University of Kentucky Wildcats 4 to 0. The Spartans have now gone undefeated day one. An impressive 3-0 record. But the real story is day two tomorrow, where national champions will be made for Western Kentucky University and the National Collegiate Dodgeball Association. I'm Brent Schinkel, signing off from the Preston Health and Activity Center in Bowling Green.